angry fans. Well, you know, I was really angry that it was on a Game Boy and not on a Sega system. I remember really liking the music. Sonic Advance 2 is music playing. I really liked the music. It was really bouncy. I really liked a lot of the music, especially Sky Canyon, I believe it was. Not just on gameplay, it's great animation. The art is phenomenal. Hot Crater Zone 2. That is an amazing stage, fantastic, awesome music. Uh, great. Yeah, great the rabbit. The knuckles. Um, good because you can pretty much cheat and just climb every hill everywhere. It doesn't even have to do with the game itself. It's more like when I got Sonic Mega Collection and I saw the trailer for Sonic Advance 2 on there. I watched that trailer every single day and I got so obsessed with Sonic Events 2 and the day I finally got it was like the greatest day of my life. Sonic 2 is better. <laughs> there you have it. Seems more people tend to favor the first two games over the third one. Johnny, come on. You could have manipulated that footage as far as the viewers are concerned. Oh, fuck you. I'm not that petty. People like what they like. Who am I to silence that? Either way, it doesn't change the fact that the Advanced Trilogy was responsible for introducing the Sonic franchise to a lot of gamers out there, just like Adventure 2 Battle 2 for the GameCube. They all have their qualities that set them apart from the others, and to some, that's what makes them good. These games really cover all the bases when you think about it. Like Johnny, you love the Genesis games, so Sonic Advance 1 hits that sweet spot for you. Those that think Sonic should be super fast have Sonic Advance 2 to look forward to. And those that love the multi-character dynamic and production values of the early 3D Sonic games have Sonic Advance 3. Yeah, I forgot. This game has voice acting. It was the last game to use the likes of Ryan Drummond as Sonic, Scott Dreher as Knuckles, Jennifer Dullier as Amy, and Dean Bristol as Dr. Eggman, who unfortunately passed away shortly after this game was released. In that essence, it's nostalgic. I'll give the game that. And this song you're hearing right now, the Sonic Advance 3 credits music, beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And there you go. I knew you could say something nice about this game. I did say I enjoyed the team feature. I did say that, right? Well, yeah, but now you said two good things. Uh, whatever. You think people will think worse of me after this video? Hey, man, you survived giving Sonic Adventure 2 a lashing years ago. If you got through that, I think you'll be just fine. I just don't want people thinking I actually hate the blue fucker, you know? Look, there are always going to be those fans that you simply cannot please. And you know what? Screw them. You are your own Sonic fan, and it's up to everyone else to think for themselves. If they can't, that's really just their problem. The music works so well for this, doesn't it? I was thinking the same exact thing. I kind of want to keep this motivational speech going just to hear the rest of it. Well, we're out of time for today, unfortunately, but and thanks again for joining me for today's video. You want to give the people an idea of uh, what it is you do? Sure thing. Well, first off, I want to say it is an honor to be on this channel. I have been a fan of your work for years now. It's pretty crazy. And if you fans out there like my commentary and want to see more, well, check out my channel. I have a bunch of ROM hack videos. I'm talking about Kingdom Hearts. I have Kirby coming up really soon. And a lot more. Really all around, I'm just a big old goofball. So, come check me out. And with that said, we're doubling the amount of screens for the next video. I'll see you guys next time with the Sonic Rush Trilogy. Wait, Trilogy? There's Sonic Rush and Rush Adventure. What's the third one? Sonic Colors? Um... No, the DS game. Oh, that's right! I totally forgot that was a thing. Well, I hope that's not foreboding in any sense. I guess I'll find out next time. Thank you all for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic night, and take care. Can celebrate that the trick system has been completely removed. <laughs> Okay, fucking stop. Instead, boost power is obtained by collecting white wisps, or by destroying enemies, which there are plenty of. Sonic can wall jump in vertical shafts, slide under low-hanging ceilings, perform boosts in mid-air, and perform a ground stomp to get his ass back on the floor at a quick pace, and THANK GOD! Going back to Sonic Rush gameplay, I had to battle with muscle memory all the fucking time. I couldn't ground stomp, mid-air boost, wall jump, I played too much Sonic Unleashed, Sonic Colors on the Wii in Generations. And to head back to the progenitor of the boost gameplay, it was tough and awkward at points, but starting with Colors DS, I felt a little more at home. The homing attack was something always in the Rush series, but it was matched to the R button and unreliable to chain combos with. It felt like a last second inclusion. 
But here it's been given more prominent accuracy and reliability. It's got a target reticle and all that. And bonus points to the DS version, you can homing attack on Wisp Capsules, something you couldn't do in the Wii version, which always confused me. Now, as for the color powers, laser, rocket, and drill, well, those all work exactly the same as the console game, but the DS version has two exclusive Wisps. There's the Burst Wisp, letting Sonic jump multiple times in the air while destroying everything around him, kind of reminded me of the Space Jump from Metroid, only this can duke everything in sight. And then there's the Void Wisp, turning Sonic into a black hole that sucks in whatever is close to him. It's like a precursor to the Asteroid Wisp from Sonic Lost World. So like the Asteroid Wisp, it's a little clunky to control. Moving up and down and turning tight corners is almost painfully sluggish. Certain wisps are generally favored in one specific planet, and like the Wii game, you're encouraged to revisit other stages once you unlock more wisps to find goodies like extra lives or red rings to unlock bonus content in the options menu. So if you're not a fan of a certain wisp, you at least don't have to worry about them overstaying their welcome. Unless it's like the Drill Wisp, because that shit is all over Planet Wisp. You know, I know handheld versions of console games have a certain stigma to them for not having the same detail or budget, but I think this is a really solid Sonic game, and if I were to rank the Rush games, this ranks right up there with the original game. My only major downside is the lack of Blaze, because I think she's an established part of the Rush lineup, but she's only a glorified cameo here along with everyone else. I love that the game utilizes the modernized boost formula with all the additional tricks Sonic could do in Sonic Unleashed. There's no in-between fluff between stages, you just go to the next one like so when it's available. Boss fights can take no time at all if you play your cards out with the color powers. Chaos emeralds are simple to obtain. This is a classic complete the stage with at least 50 rings to enter the special stage, but this game just throws rings and extra lives at you. Check that live count, that shit doesn't lie. But I do think the special stage is going a little long if I'm being honest here, and it's the half pipe again. I know I complained about it enough already, but I'm still tired of this. I fucking... Unless you're playing the optional missions, I'd love to kick you in the balls looking at you, Asteroid Coaster. I found Sonic Colors DS to have just the right amount of difficulty. It isn't swarmed with bad enemy placements, spikes, or bottomless pits. This is a damn comfortable game that doesn't overstay its welcome, and anyone who loves this style of Sonic should definitely play it. Honestly, I find it neck and neck with the Wii game in terms of quality. It's only missing the Eggman PA announcements. This amusement park has been constructed entirely out of a sense of remorse for my past transgressions, and is in no way associated with any sort of evil plot or premeditated misdeeds. Ah, let me think here. What other handheld stuff was left to cover? I did Generations 3DS in a previous video. I did Lost World 3DS with the Wii U game. The Sonic Boom stuff. Oh, there's the Sonic Rivals games in the PSP. Racing games, though. And the Sonic's got a share of those, believe me. You know what? Fuck it. Why don't we just look at all the racing games next time? Sonic Drift, Sonic Rider, Sonic Rivals, All-Stars Race and Transform. Hey, you know, it's not like I lost my mind covering all the Street Fighter games with that retrospective, and I know some of you enjoy my longer videos, so next video should be pretty beefy. Afterwards, I really don't want this current marathon to go beyond February, early March the latest, but with the release of the Nintendo Switch, I really want to head back into Zelda. But I know I got some unfinished business with Sonic, and after the racing stuff, I only have two planned videos left with the Blue Hedgehog for this marathon. Now what games are those? You'll find out next time. Thank you all for watching, have yourselves a fantastic night, and take care. volcano stage before calling it quits. My body was sore, I was sweating buckets because do I look like a fit motherfucker? Only positive thing about this, I guess to you guys, is that I have a connect now, so it's only a matter of time before I do that Star Wars game. Well, just one more game left to look at, and for a while people were wondering, why did it take so fucking long to get to this game? I enjoyed Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing, so why not immediately jump into the sequel, Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transformed? It was three things. One, at launch, I bought the Wii U version of the game. Had some extra content, but it was bugged up the ass, and I put it on the shelf after just one week of playing it. Secondly, I just plain forgot about it. Like, even after patch fixes, or when it was released on the PC, I just didn't pay it any mind. I wanted to play other things at the time, which sort of got worse when Mario Kart 8 made its rounds. The third reason I'll get to in a moment, though some of you may already know what that is. In a way, I'm looking at this game out of obligation, but don't take that the wrong way. Sonic and All-Stars Racing Transform is still a great time. I repurchased it on Steam because I didn't want to take any more chances on the Wii U, and I'm glad I did. Compared to the Wii U version, this runs smooth as butter. Barely any load times, frame rates locked at 60, and nothing against the Wii U gamepad. I have no problem playing Mario Kart 8 on the thing after all. But an Xbox 360 controller just feels better in my hands for this sort of game. All-Stars Racing Transform is about more of the same from the first All-Stars game. Several characters are at your disposal, and you unlock more content like courses and characters by completing World Tour events. The higher the difficulty, the more points you're rewarded with, and this time it's not just Sega All-Stars. I thought that was a typo at first. But no, that was intentional, and it's because we have characters like Pyro Heavy and Spy from Team Fortress, Ralph from Wreck-It Ralph, and Football Manager, Shogun, Danica Patrick, it's starting to feel like I hit a random article generator on Wikipedia. 
like its Nintendo counterpart, you can pick up items to help gain the advantage, whether it's temporary boost of speed or a quick projectile to momentarily spin your opponent out of control. However, as before, items are relatively small potatoes and not total game changers. Winning races largely falls on how well you can dress on the road, take advantage of the speed boost that you can get from chaining them together, and performing stunts when you can get some air time, and thanks to the most defining aspect of Transform, you'll get more than enough opportunities. In certain points of the race, your vehicle will transform into either a speedboat or an aircraft to accommodate the changing environments. Besides suddenly need to adjust to flight control, something I gave Sonic Riders a bit of shit for, both handle about the same as the car, so it's more for visual pizzazz more than anything else, and it does add a dynamic component to these racetracks. In one lap, you're burning rubber on the road, and then by the third lap, oh shit, that road was just destroyed, now it's time to take it to the skies. It's like every stage is telling a short story, adding to the appeal of already visually stunning courses, this game looks great. But here's the gist of it, the third reason why it took so long to look at this game, because it's one of those that you could recommend to people under 10 seconds. Did you like Sonic and Sega All-Stars Racing? Do you enjoy Mario Kart? Well, this is pretty much Sonic Kart, nothing radically different, nothing you haven't seen before, but it utilizes a working formula, it's functional thusly, so you should definitely play it if you want some Sega love in your kart racing formula. If I did a separate video on this game, it'd be under a minute long, and I don't think I'm popular enough to do one minute reviews and feel comfortable about it. Now, if it's part of a compilation, that's a different story, which is why I waited until I wanted to talk about other racing games before finally heading into this one. And it's good, play it with friends online to get the most out of it, it has enough meat in its bones to warrant revisits with a variety of missions and modifications you can unlock in your vehicle, and it's easy to understand. Sure, it's not as extreme as Sonic Riders, but I couldn't care, I can play this, and I think you can too. Now, upon those last two videos, one's a handheld, so it does technically count for this marathon. The other one isn't, but you see, since 2012 when I did my retakes in the 3D Sonic franchise, I've been meaning to give these two titles some similar treatment. I have covered them before, but that was so many years ago, I wanted to see how much has changed in my eyes and perspective since then. Some of you have already guessed what they were based on this teaser image I gave you guys at the end of the Rush video. So yes, next time, we're heading back to 2008. First up to bat is Sonic Chronicles The Dark Brotherhood for the Nintendo DS, and afterwards, Sonic Unleashed. Both versions. With that said, thank you all for watching. Have yourselves a fantastic night. Take care.